Okay, we're moving on again. We're back here in industrial technology syllabus for stage six. We're looking at the preliminary course, industry related manufacturing technologies. We're under that heading of tools, machine, uh, sorry, processes, tools, and machinery. We're specifically under processes at the moment though. And we've gone through planning. We're now moving into preparation of timber. Now, in terms of manufacture of a project, this preparation phase technically happens before we begin working on our projects, usually. That being said, you need to know about it before you make your final order because it goes into some detail around what you need to consider when ordering your timber because your costs are impacted by things like the dressing preparation process. So we're going to learn about dressing, thicknessing, face and edge. You should know a bit about these already, but dressing is probably something we need to go into some uh, fresher detail. Again, the main key here is thinking about how they apply to our projects, but also uh, the sorts of processes that happen in industry that may not actually happen at school. And dressing is particularly important here uh, because there are aspects of dressing that we don't have access to due to the nature of uh, the machine required for dressing and how dangerous it is um, and the fact that it's currently banned for use uh, in schools. So let's have a look there. Now dressing. Dressing isn't the process of putting clothes on timber or covering it in materials, but it's all about actually taking material off the timber, in fact. So it's almost an undressing process. When a tree gets cut down, it is cut as a log. That log is sent off to the timber yard, it's debarked, and then it gets immediately sawn. It either gets quarter sawn, back sawn, or live sawn. And that's its initial rough sawn phase. When that rough sawn has happened, it is what we call a nominal size. So nominal is this very old process. It's not really um, technically accurate anymore, but it's an uh, industry based truth that people have continued to follow along for the sake of, uh, for the sake of tradition. Nominal sizing is where you may have heard people, particularly in America, because this is an, uh, an uh, American-based thing, imperial system, you hear people say, oh, you know, I purchased some 2 by 4 or 3 by 8 or 4 by 2s That is all inch by inch width and thickness dimensions. These are nominal dimensions, so nominal width, nominal thickness. Nominal is the bigger size. It's at its full sawn uh, size. When this happens, okay, so when this happens... It is really a rough cutting process. It is to get it roughly to the size needed. It's not the finished size used. Now in furniture making, we tend to be using dressed timber because dressed has nice, clean, smooth edges. They're down to specific sizes, very consistent sizes the whole way across. It's not a rough process and it's all after the drying process. So dressing is the process of actually using a machine to finish edges and faces of the board. There are, there are a couple of different types of dressing that you may come across. Full sawn, which is the largest size board, and usually is furry and quite rough in appearance. And if you order a, um, if you ordered a two by four, for example, it should actually be two inches by four inches. So it's, it's true to that size, it's the actual size. When we get to uh, rough sawn, it's usually slightly smaller because there's a small degree of uh, dressing that may occur after rough sawn processes have happened. But in fully dressed timber, there's a huge amount of lost wood as a result of taking those surfaces off. The dressing process is using thickness planers and jointers to actually plane down the surfaces to a consistently flat, even, consistent surface that has been machined smooth. This is, this is what we work with typically in our projects. So instead of that rough furry image you can see on the, on the uh, left of the two boards at the bottom, the right hand board which has that nice smooth finish, not rough at all, that's a dressed board. Now in terms of dressed timber, we use dressed all round. That means all edges and faces have been dressed, okay? Top, 
bottom, left, right, all dressed, all smooth, all flat, all planned, all machined. It's more expensive because there's more processes involved, uh, but perfect piece of timber. The second that you may uh, come across is D1S1E, dressed one side, end one edge. D1 for dressed one, S1 for side, one edge, E. Okay, dressed one side and one edge. In this circumstance, it's a little bit cheaper to purchase because less processes have happened. One face and one edge have been planed and machined to be smooth. Okay, so one face, one edge, okay, but the other two are still back in their rough or, or, um, or full sawn stages. Okay, it's important that for use at school, you need to at least be working with D1S1E because with D1S1E, with one flat edge and one flat size, we can actually then use a table saw and a thickness planer to dress the remaining sizes. But it's more machining processes, which is more time, and keeping in mind the safety restrictions preventing students from using table saws mean that that process uh, has to be done by a teacher, so it's effectively an outsourcing. The other part of preparing timber is thicknessing. So you may even have dressed timber, but you may decide that the thickness that you're using is larger than what you require. So you need to put your timber through a machine known as the thickness planer to bring it down to the final thickness that you require. Okay, so this is the thicknessing process. This occurs before your timber is cut to its final length. So if I'm thinking about the processes, I would buy my timber from the shop, maybe it's dressed, maybe it came 19 millimeters thick, and I actually need it to be 16 millimeters thick. Before I make any cuts, I do the thicknessing process, and I do that because when I am thicknessing, I would obviously lose my pencil marks, but also I may actually experience some, uh, some cutout during the planing process. I may experience some damage to the surface of the timber, checking, for example. Um, and so in that sense, I would want to make sure that I've done the thicknessing first so I then have the opportunity to select the best part of the board when I cut it to its final size. Particularly also the edges of the board as they hit the thickness blade can sometimes get damaged. Little chips may uh, flake away there, um, particularly if you don't have your thickness set correctly. And so you may damage the edges of your timber if you thickness after you've cut them to length. Now a thickness that has a rotating blade inside or several blades or sometimes even uh, the modern ones now have helical blades, so multiple smaller blades uh, in a helical shape that spin on the inside, so they're spinning across the top of the machine. Your timber goes through the center and that planing blade across the top shaves off one of the faces, the top face of your board. Okay? Kind of in the same way that an electric planer would, but where an electric hand, pla hand plane is used or even a traditional hand plane is used, this Ideally, it gives you a, uh, because it's a machine-based process, a little bit more control, so a little bit more consistent in terms of the amount of material that gets taken off. This can be a really useful process in overcoming some very minor warps in timber, but may not, may not work. You really need to judge it um, based on how bad the warping is. Now, in thicknessing, you may have heard me uh, refer to tear out, and you may have uh, heard me refer to checking. These processes indicate that you may not be thicknessing correctly. And it's at this point you really need to go back to the fundamental processes around how you read the grain direction. Making sure you're dealing with the arrows and cathedrals and the direction of the grain and the slope of the grain, so all of those aspects around grain correctly to prevent that damage from happening. And um, there's a great video that runs through that process that I'll add into the show notes as well um, if you wanted some more detail there. Okay? But that's the thicknessing process. The other component that we talk about here in the preparation of timber is determining the face and the edge, face side and face edge. Now, a couple things we need to know about. When we are working with undressed timber, we need to dress it and we use a jointer, then a thicknesser, then a table saw, in that order. Okay? That would be the order that I would recommend. Now, a jointer is kind of like a thicknesser. So imagine a rotating plane blade that you run the timber across. But instead of it being in a machine that auto feeds, 
you have a blade pointing upwards, so it's in the base of the table, and you run the timber across the surface of it, and it planes down. That's why it's really dangerous and one of those machines that we don't use in schools. So because I don't have access to one at school to show you, I've linked in there a uh, video demonstration you may want to refer to. And again, I'll put that in the show notes um, just so you can see how a, uh, how a jointer works in terms of getting that initial face on an undressed board. Once your boards are dressed, you need to then have a look at it and think, which is the nicest or most effective or most appropriate face side and face edge for my project? Which bits do I want facing out to the client at the front of the project? And I then put my face side and face edge markings on them. You can see them indicated there on the drawing in the circle. Uh, so it's kind of like a little squirrely uh, mark and then that matches up with a little arrow on the face edge to indicate this is the main edge that I'm gonna use as a reference point. Then whenever I do any of my markings or any of my processes from here on, I remember that that edge is my face side and face edge and I work on all of the other edges on the board to try and avoid any damage or any adjustment to this face side and face edge. It gives me a consistent reference point. We refer to this in industry as a datum. Okay? So that's the end of the preparation processes. If we think about the processes around, uh, around our projects, we obviously, sketches, designs, working drawings, materials list, calculations, costing, purchasing of the timber. The timber then arrives to the uh, workshop and then we do these preparing of timber phases. Dressing if not already dressed, thicknessing, face edge, and then the next part of that is to now actually start working on cutting to length and dealing with the manufacture of individual components in terms of their overall uh, role they play in parts of a major project and all of the joinery associated. Okay, and so our next video really looks at the manufacturing processes and the suggested order that we would consider following if we were making a project. Do you do the doors first? Do you do the legs first? Do you do the rails first, etc.? That's what we're looking at in our next video. Hope that one's really helpful for you and look forward to seeing you again next time. Thanks.